hold on. You know what a log is, right? Yeah, like a log book. Yes, and you know what it means when you put E in front of something, right? <laughs> okay, I was assuming that's what it was, I just didn't know. Uh, it's like yeah, having... continue. Okay. Yes, I get it. Yeah. What about it? They're stupid. Well, we were talking about... Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah I learned, learned today, so, so while I was making... Doing stuffing or over products or on intro. Right. Sorry, the intro is super loud. <laughs> He's still running into our veins. So, Xantis, they make um, different leak detections for ACs and heaters. Well, they're so lazy, they don't want to pack their stuff. They don't want to send you their printed boxes, and then we right. have to. Take the products, put it into the boxes, stuff their displays, and put it in an actual the uh, transport boxes. It's that's uh, stupid. It's not my choice, but whatever. I'd rather do that this week. But they try and shorten it so he confiscated one of the the Android tablets out of the conference room. Okay. And the speakers were really horrible. As I explained, I could hear the hum in my on my eardrums. So that that bad. Wow. As I was I was watching Big Greek videos while I'm doing this, and there was one video if I could find the others, but they were talking about e logs, and this guy was talking about how I didn't know this actually. So the e logs they kick in at like a very low brawl or I think like 15 miles an hour or something like a very low speed. Right. They kick on the e log it'll start clocking your hours. Oh, okay. Well, I think it once it once it starts clocking, it does not stop until you run out of hours. So let's. So what we laughed are talking about is so let's say you're at a dock waiting to load any ships for six and a half hours. And, and it continues to run your. Oh Christ! <laughs> you see the and, problem now. <laughs> and you have, and you have like you know like ten hour, run ten hours of run time you know uh, on your dock, mm. and that's mm. all you have. And once you run out, you run out. There's no way to stop it? No. It, it's well, there is a way. It's called running out of hours. <laughs> That's the only way to get it to stop. Is well, there you could unplug it. I mean, you could unplug it, but you gotta take a hard dash apart to get to the thing, and then... And this, so, yeah, it's really not convenient. Oh, well, so wait, you gotta take your dashboard... Is, is something that screws you over if you have any sort of delay. Got it. Well, if you can unplug oh, yeah. it, I'm sure that you could rig it so that you have a switch on your dashboard that you can flip up and down and turn it on and off. Yeah, but then you gotta worry about the company that you're working for that has them in there is okay with that. Well, they'll hide the switch. They don't have to know about it. <laughs> well, but the thing is, if you've seen, like, so, like, Indiana Jack, he did watch it. I watched his video last night on, um, he, he him was doing his and... 2012 Volvo VNL and so it, it plugs into this this port that is to your engine right and you have this whole loop loop sitting in it and by the time you the plug in, there really is no really you know, quote, you know quote quote air quotes right now unplugging it right and it connected to your CPU and all that stuff, you know, and your antenna all and that happy. signal. As, yeah, as my so, friend would say, all that happy horse shit. Yeah, yeah so basically. there really is no protocol any unplugging it. Right. So there really is not many ways around. You could unplug it, but you had to take your entire dash apart, you know, while you And not only that, you're going to have to try to... You're trying to not run wires through a firewall and all kinds of stuff because I mean if it's connected, because from what you're saying is if it's if it's clock if it's set up so that once you go over a specific speed it starts clocking that means it's not only hooked into just the engine but it's also hooked into the main readout for your speedometer, so that means it's hooked into the engine's main computer, which means that you then have to run, not only run wires usually through the firewall depending on where the engine's main computer is. But then, if you're going to try to undo it, 
you're also going to have to worry about shorting out any wires in the vicinity of those wires that exactly. are going through the firewall. Exactly. So wait, where is the actual e-log system? In the cab. So can't you just it's, can't you just detach? No. no, look, splice the wires going straight to the system and put the switch right there. It's not always that simple. Yeah. I don't know much about electronics. That's why I'm legitimately asking. It it would depend on it would depend on how it's wired. That that's really what it comes down to. But from the way I I don't know anything about them. So from the way Rusty's describing it, it sounds like the only way you could get a splice in is further towards the firewall. But if you splice in towards the firewall, where it would be smart because you're going to want to run wire away from it for the switch, and you don't want to have a short wire for the switch, um, is if you have it near the firewall, then you have to worry about everything shorting out. And if something sparks or shorts, and you say have a wire going into your air control valve or or your RPM limiter for when you switch on your Jake, you could have a situation where you're basically one switch, one braking area away from having half your engine detonate itself. Yeah. Which that, which then you're just fucked. It doesn't matter if your hours are clocking or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might think we're gonna move anybody. Not really gonna get the shorts entirely out of the way, am I? <laughs> Well, you're off the road, so you're fine. I guess. Honestly. So, I actually, I want to, I don't think I, I d definitely didn't tell Rusty because I don't talk to you enough, but I don't know if I tell Z about this. Z, did I tell you the story about the guy who got fired from his job driving for showing up too early to a pickup? No, I don't think so. Too early? Okay, so, the, I, I never I, heard this story. So, this was something I found on YouTube, and I can track down the original video for it pretty easily, because I probably am going to butcher explaining this. But basically what happened was, this guy worked for a company, he'd been working there for five years, and he liked where he was. It was good hours, good pay, good truck, this, that, the other thing. So, they had an area where they went to pick up, and they used... But the area was a very small area, so what would happen is, trucks were waiting, they'd wait out on the road, they'd be parked over on the shoulder. And the fire marshal went to these guys who ran this company that were getting the trucks were picking up from and were like, this is a fire hazard, we can't have you doing this. So, they could, you couldn't show up more than 15 minutes early for when your load was supposed to be picked up. That, that was what the company put in place and that's what the fire marshal put yeah, in place. Know. Right. Well, that's bullshit. Or I no, mean... it, it was, it was... You couldn't show up more than half an hour. That's what it was. So then the company this guy worked for um, was informed of this news, and they went one step further. They had they told all their dispatchers to tell their drivers that if they went to this specific company, they were not allowed to show up more than 15 minutes early for their pickup. And if they did, then not only would the driver be fired on the spot, but the dispatcher as well. Oh, jeez. Yeah, they weren't playing around. So, this guy, this company also had a rule where you, if, you were late, if you were late for a load too many times, you could get fired. So you couldn't be late and you couldn't be early. You had to be basically perfectly on time. So this guy gets a call... So this guy gets a call from his dispatch telling him that he has to go pick up a load from this company and that he's not allowed to arrive early. Or... Yeah, that he's not allowed to arrive early. Or late. <laughs> well, he, I mean, that's kind he, of him. He already knows that he can't arrive late. <laughs> but the dispatcher didn't specify how early. Now, he's had this situation happen before where the dispatcher told him he couldn't arrive early. He felt that that meant that he couldn't show up, like, two hours early. Right, because, yeah. Right. So he shows up half an hour early. He rolls in. His load's ready and waiting for him. They're ready to load him up. So he rolls in, picks up his load, barely any waiting, and he's on his way. So he gets to the distribution center where he was taking the load to. And the uh, 
manager of the distribution center comes out to him and is like, I need to talk to you. And he didn't think anything of it. So he went in and talked to the distribution center manager where all this was explained to him. And he was told that he, he was basically told that he was fired because he showed up early to the job. Well, he didn't want to be fired from the company because he liked where he was and he didn't want to go have to start over at a company. So he ended up going through five guys, one of which was a conference call with, like, basically right below the owners of the company. Hmm. Uh, somebody, somebody who was basically the third man for the guy who owned the company. He ended up on a conference call with him, and now the dispatcher was fired because he didn't tell him about the 15-minute rule. Right. So they thought so they felt that the dispatcher was at fault and that he was he was doing his best in the scenario that was presented to him and he was given his job back. Hmm. But he was he was basically fired because he did the audacious thing of showing up half an hour early <laughs> to a pickup. Oh yeah, my goodness. Cool. So yeah, it is. Like, I understand why you can't just have trucks sitting around like that, especially in a populated area. Right. But, but getting fired over it, especially a first offense, that's a little ridiculous. Yeah, like I said, I'll find the original video to it so that you guys can listen to it straight from his mouth. Because he explains it much better than I do. But I'm sitting there listening to this, and I was like, holy fuck, this guy got dicked over. <laughs> Uh, well, no, my first thought was, I, I wish he didn't name what, I don't think he named what the company was, and I was like, I really wish he named what the company was, because I never want to work for them. This, yeah, I'm going to specifically make sure I don't work there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, like, uh, Bronco, where are I, you? Uh, I'm on my way towards Oxnard. Hey, okay, where are you? <laughs> uh, I think I'm just outside of Krem? Just outside of Krem? You're I, on the wrong road, then. You're in Bakersfield? No, we're in Barstow. Yeah. We're in Barstow. You're in, you're in well, Barstow. Technically, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, where am I? I'm actually just outside Arsnard. <laughs> I'm about to get on five. I can head straight up to Barstow. Or, no, Bakersfield. What the? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't... I, can tur I can turn around right now and go to Barstow if I wanted to. I, I was wondering if that... Because when I was over here trying to park, I saw a blue dot go by on the highway. I didn't think much of it. I think that was you. <laughs> it probably was. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm pulling over here for fuel because yeah, I might... Marsh? Sorry. I might have the Barstow garage. So I'm gonna Barstow doesn't that. have a garage. It doesn't? I thought no. it did. Bakersfield does. Bakersfield, Bakersfield does. Bakersfield is what I'm thinking of. Fresno. Fucking Fresno. All right, time to keep rolling then. Right. See, this is what yeah. happens when you have to go d do dishes. Okay. Yes, shut up. Stupid curve. <sighs> None of the chemical plants around here are producing any of the good, fun things. Yeah, those don't. Those aren't very common trailers. Well, no. I mean, all I'm getting stuck with is the freaking box trailers. Like, even I just I take the sixty footer. That we know is the 60 footer. I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to call it the 60 footer. I mean, we all know what you're talking about, so I guess it works. Exactly. Just shut up. Who stops at red lights? Most people. Truckers no, and he got like, really strict. Guys, it's like I'm blocking the entire road. No, I'm just okay. Because... I'm turning around and heading up to Barstow. Well, why are you doing that? You might as well just wait for us in Barstow. You're coming down here now? Yeah, we're all delivering to Oxnard. Oh, you are you still haven't made it to Oxnard. Okay. No, we were sitting in Barstow waiting for you. I I was trying to intercept you because I expected you to be in Oxnard then. You really need to start asking questions and not just assuming things because you're not very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Well, you need to just stop waiting for me <laughs> and just keep driving. Well, you need to stop being real life that's gonna be easier said than done. Yeah, tell me about it. 
Honestly, I wish yeah. that, like, I've said this before, I wish that I would be real life more. I feel like I just have such an easy life. It's just like, you know, all my friends, you know, you guys work, and Bronco, you're doing school and college and work. And work, and oh, I'm just over here, like, you know, I can basically be on the computer whenever I want, and I feel bad for you, and I feel like it's my fault, because I don't have to do all this stuff. Well, I used to be the same way. I was in layout for, like, a year, so, I mean, you know, I was... Technically. I'm hoping that I'll stop feeling this way when I get a job over the summer, but... <laughs> Hey, enjoy it while it lasts, I mean, honestly. Well, the enjoy thing it. is, though, I mean, like I said, I want to be doing stuff. I feel like I just don't do enough. I feel like I'm a disappointment, basically. Hey, I've seen that truck before. Hmm. But yeah, as far as the whole story, I'm not, I was expecting you guys to be, you know, like, Two three hours early to a drop off. I mean, even me, including, I was want to, I would want to be there that early. Yeah, like you're basically then you're just sitting there wasting time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but you know, I could see you know thirty forty five minutes early. You know, I mean, I could see that. You I mean, know, that's... heck, if I was coming into town, looked at the clock, and saw I was that even forty five minutes early, I would go get lunch or something. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's this, yeah. Oh, I need an exit. Shit. <clears throat> and I couldn't get over. Because of the heavy haul. You mean me? Yes. I was giving I you could. space. All you had to do was tap the brakes a little bit, you would have made it. Oh well. It's alright, I'll turn around, so good. Hey Bronco, if you're trying to talk, we can't hear you. But it is, yeah. <laughs> okay, I think I, he muted himself. Maybe. Or he's just blaring country music in his ears and he can't hear us. Oh, look at that low on fuel already. Really? Hmm. Did you not fill up yeah. while we were spending half an hour talking and sitting next to a gas station? No, I didn't fill up. <laughs> now we do an absolute no-no. Dum de dum de dum. Ah, oh, shoot. I might have to get off after this load. Why? I gotta go to bed. Go to bed, but you do nothing. I do nothing. Yeah, you don't work. I mean, I why still do you go work? to high school. Good. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> it is fairly important. <laughs> School's not important. It's... Yeah, try telling my parents that. Seriously, well, I, I, mean, I love I... you. Just try. To... <laughs> well, I mean, I really seriously, I feel like half. Three quarters of what what they try to teach you, you know, it's like it's just not. 
you know, really usable. No, I agree with that, but at the same time, I'm taking two different computer classes this year, so that stuff is important to me. Well, yeah, I mean, anything outside of, like, the generic class. But, yeah, like, like the English stuff and math and all that, like, after about sixth grade, you don't need it anymore. Yeah, I mean, I would see, you know, anything, you know, any extracurricular, like, you know, like, woods or metal or welding or carpentry or construction or food, you know, all those and other areas, you know, I see those being important, you know, because you actually use those skills in real life. Yeah. Well, not necessarily construction, but I mean, you know, food is kind of one of the important ones. Well, I mean, I'm not expecting to need to know much more than how to use a microwave. I'm not going to fit much more in a big truck. <laughs> No, but I'm just saying, you know, but like... Yeah, you know, for the for the general person, yeah. <laughs> well. Well, as you had one of those ARI sleepers, you got a full-on stove in there. True, but... Eh, not really. Am I? Like, the thing... Those sleepers are great, but trying to get around a warehouse complex with one of those things must be a pain in the butt. Actually, I never drove one personally, but I mean... I have watched video on guys that have them and actually it's actually not, not as bad as you think they are. I mean, they're a little bit longer wider turns than what you would, you know, with a basic standard frame truck. Well, but... I mean, the other thing is the warehouses that I'm used to, which isn't much, my dad hauls wood chips, mostly, but some of the warehouses I've seen, you can hardly fit a normal sized truck from the dock to the fence. So if you had one of those legacy sleepers, you're not fitting in that deep room. Oh, hell no. Oh, he's back. Yes, my, I had a phone call to take. Oh. Uh, yeah. So anyways.
Oh no. Um, I don't know if you heard me when I said this, Bronco, but I gotta get off. I gotta go to bed. Oh, uh, okay. So, I'm just rolling into Oxnard proper, and I'm gonna just- Hey, it's you! Yes! <laughs> and someone else I know. Who's the other truck? Rusty. It's Rusty. That's Rusty! How did- What? <laughs> Rusty, that guy who you were talking- of... That I guy you were talking cool. about who was blowing his horn annoyingly back at the freaking vision work? That was me. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, hey, Rusty, blow my horn. There's some guy who's just being really obnoxious <laughs> with his horn. I was like, oh, okay, I see how it is, so I came and ran you down. Well, uh, Bronco, I tend to forget this myself, but the way he plays, uh, he can't see his oh. GPS very well. Oh, okay. I use the actual, like, the, the dashboard GPS map. Gotcha. I don't use the blow up map, because I'm... Uh, I try to, but well, I usually leave it up there um, to check the time and shit. See, there, the only there reason... more work here, I mean. We, we keep Sorry. talking over each other. Uh, that was both of us. Don't apologize, yeah. it was both of us. Um, the only reason I keep it up is because I have to have my frame rate, or I have to have my graphics so low that I actually can't read my speedometer very well. Depending on what truck I'm in. So, I have to keep mine up so I can see what speed I'm going. But yet, better yet, I don't run the GPS at all, like the, the, the red line. I don't run that at all either. Yeah, see, I tried to talk Bronco into doing that, but he wouldn't. Like, I mean, once <laughs> you know the map, it's usually pretty easy to navigate. I mean... <laughs> That's the I thing, Bronco the doesn't know the map. If you ever watch... We've established this. Yeah, we did a navigation challenge. It's up on his channel, if you ever go and watch it. <laughs> yeah, le let's just say I lost. Bad. Pretty, pretty substantially. Yeah. Well, so, where was the uh, location? Um. Uh, here, he, hold on. I, yeah. I can explain. I can explain it. Okay. So, well, how about, how, hold on, hold on. Let me get off and everything, and then you can explain. 